Hi, welcome to episode 112 of the Passionate Spinner podcast. My name is Tracy. You can find me as Schnüffeltier on Ravelry and Instagram. There's a Ravelry group for the podcast. Please come over, join. Thank you so much for being here. And also, thank you so, so much for everyone who got in touch after last week's podcast when I talked about how hard it is to be a stay-at-home mom and all the um, shit that gets thrown my way for it. And uh, it's good to know that there's a lot of people out there who do it the same way and who would never change it. So thank you so, so much. Now, I still have a cold. It's not, it's just not going away. I tried everything. Chemical, tablet, uh, tablets, <laughs> tabletten is a German word, um, pills, you know, for cold. I tried all the natural remedies I know of. I still have a cold. So we will have to work with this. <clears throat> What I'm wearing today is my new me made finished outfit that I'm going to talk about in the sewing segment of the podcast. So it is me made. I'm very happy with how it turned out. For knitting in the past, I have something. I knit a hat for Tim. It is just a just a hat. I didn't use a pattern. It is, you know, very snug on my head. So it fits perfectly on my toddler's head. It's actually a little bit big for him, but Better too big than too small because the first no this was a great idea wasn't it? <coughs> I had started a hat for him and I had to rip it out because it was too small. And then I started again. I think I cast on ninety stitches, but I thought somehow that I had eighty eight. And I started the crown decreases um, in eight places because eighty eight is perfect for an eight place crown decrease only to realize that I too have two additional stitches that I had to get rid of, but I just got rid of them and you can't tell. So the yarns that I used came from my stash and okay. Um, <laughs> let's, now let's see. Okay. The brim yarn here that I used for the brim is this skein of yarn. I used sock yarn help double. Also, I have to do this a little higher because I feel like I'm cutting my head off. I'm still cutting my head off. Okay. Um, the This gray yarn is Souls and More Sensations. It's, um, it's a Joanne's sock yarn that I received in a swap, I think, some time ago. So that's what I used for the, for the brim. And the body of the hat, I used these two skeins. And they are Loops and Threads Luxury Sock Super Fine. It's a cashmere blend with 10% cashmere in it. And it is, I think, also from Joann's. No, it's from Michael's. So it's a big store, big box store, American sock yarn. And it's very soft. I mean, it's a cashmere content of 10%. So, of course, it's very soft. And he loves it. So, yeah. I made a hat for Tim. I used 3.5 mil needles for the brim and four millimeter needles for the hat. That's a US four and a US six. And now he can have his hat. I told him yesterday that he cannot have it because I had to take it and um, show it on my podcast, but now it's his hat. Um, so that's the only thing I finished, but I'm still working on my sweaters. I have not touched the tabular because it's the most boring knit ever right now. So I didn't touch it. But I worked a lot on my Mod Mania cardigan. Here is a picture of what it's supposed to look like in the end. And my colors are green, brown, and orange. And <clears throat> I started the first sleeve. So I finished the body. And I'm not I have absolutely no idea how to show this to you. So here it is. This is the body of my cardigan. It is done. It has a very weird shape, but it actually feels nice when you wear it. So I put it on just to, you know, to see how far down it reached because I decided to go for the shorter option, but it is long enough to cover my, bu my bump. So it's a nice, a nice length. And I also did not do ribbing at the bottom just an eye cord and yeah I love this I have wound six skeins of sock yarn 
different ones. I'm going to talk about all of them when it's done and uh, use some leftovers that fit in the color scheme. And yeah, like I said, I started the first sleeve. I'm doing the magic loop. I could do them on DPNs, but because of the, you know, you, you knit a part of it in one by one rib and the other part in garter, I just decided to keep it on magic loop. So I just have to do one by one rib on one needle and garter on the other as to not confuse myself because my brain is still full of snot. So, ah, uh, yeah, didn't want to overcomplicate things for me. For the, um, what's the word? For the collar, I used Drops Alpaca Silk held together with a skein of sock yarn. And I'm not sure actually if I have enough of that skein of sock yarn to do both sleeves. So, um, you know, the, the cuffs on the sleeves, I will have to wait and see what happens there. But yes, Mart Mania Cardigan. I hope to finish it by next week maybe, because this is such a fun knit because you change colors all the time and the shape and everything. And I mean, it's a Stephen West pattern. So, um, my husband brought it to a very good point once and said, oh, that's typical Stephen West. It's kind of easy to make, but it looks amazing because of the colors. And that's exactly what it is. It's super easy to make. So if you have never knit a garment, this is it. It's so simple and <coughs> it's just amazing and so much fun to make. So the other thing, I have been working on my rose cardigan. That's a pa uh, um, pattern by Andrea Maury. And I'm not sure if I like it, to be honest. So I finished the first quadrant. You knit quadrants that you then sew together and then you do an attached collar. And yeah. Um, let's see if I have a picture. Here's a picture. This is what it's supposed to look like. But mine, of course, is way more colorful because I decided to use stash yarn. And I have, like I said, finished the first quadrant. You leave it on, you leave the stitches live, then you're supposed to block it first and then put the pieces together by a three needle binder. Not sure yet if I will do that, but yeah. Now, this is what it looks like. It's a reverse stockinette cardigan with a little bit of a cable pattern. And I have done my fade in six colors. And as you can see, I decided for the lighter color for the fade color. It's, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I like it, to be honest. I do like the colors, but it's going to be rather short and very wide because this is only half. So, you know, I have to actually have to put it here and then it goes to my arm, but it also kind of goes out to my elbow. So I'm not sure yet. I'm just going to have to continue. If I don't like it, I will end up using it around the house as I throw on cardigan. So, you know, I'm going to definitely finish it. Hopefully I will love it. If not, I will still use it. So we will, we'll see. Um, using for what, did, what, did, what am I using? <laughs> I'm using five different skeins of Colina Chitterbuck, one skein of Serendipity Sock by Sin String. And I, pulled out a skein of Saxon Rock Lightweight for the collar. And I'm knitting it on a US 5. That's a 3.75 millimeter needle. The original um, is knit out of sport weight, a four color fade where you need two skeins of two of the colors. And um, it's knit on a 3.5 mil needle. So I went up a needle size. The yarn is roughly sport weight. But of course, I have seven skeins and seven different colors instead of four. But that's what I have and that's what I'm going to use. For knitting in the future, I have a lot of plans. I am itching to cast on something new, but I want to finish the Malt Mania first. Because if I don't, I will, you know, accumulate a lot of sweaters again that need sleeves. And I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to finish the Malt Mania and then I'm going to start new stuff. Maybe. <laughs> I have plans. I want to start a Nook. I knit a nook in the beginning of the year. It's um, a pattern from the first Len magazine. And it's basically a sleeveless raglan sweater. And I want to use this skein of yarn. And it should be enough. It's 700 meters. It's by Lana Grossa. It's a skein of uh, their Gomitolo yarn. 
And I got this as a reward for going to the dentist a while ago. And I only got one because she only had one. But I have two in a different color. These two. And I really like this color. And I have decided on a pattern for these. And I'm going to knit the Kaylee out of the anniversary is issue of Pom Pom Magazine. And I printed the pattern yesterday, but I do have the magazine here. So I want to start the Kaylee, which is this sweater here. It's a boxy sweater with pockets. Ah, here we go. So I'm going to knit this sweater out of this yarn because I think this is going to be really nice. And as the sweater itself doesn't have a lot of um, interest, <laughs> it just is a stockinette sweater with a few gutteriches in, I think that this yarn will be okay for it. You know, it, the yarn will not take away from the patterning of the sweater. And also, out of this book, I want to knit the soiree which is this sweater here, another boxy sweater with a bit of a cabling. A bit of a cabling. Wow. Told you it's not. I have um, decided on the yarn for this and I'm going to use yarn from my wonderful friend Sadie who has the Knitter's Nightmare Dying business. And I'm going to use the colorway Squirrel Friend. And the Soare is... Um, a pattern that calls for a skein of fingering weight yarn and a skein of lace weight mohair. And I, of course, don't do mohair, so I decided to get some more of the alpaca silk from Drops. So this is going to be my soiree. This is the colorway beige. <laughs> Very boring, but I think this is going to be a beautiful sweater. So this is one of the plans that I have. Just have to put it back because, like, Everything that I have planned, it is assembled in a Ziploc bag. Then the other plan is a go-to raglan, that's a pattern by Stephen West, that I'm going to do um, in a fuzzy mixture. I decided on this yarn from Ushitita. I have three skeins of this. I bought it originally to knit a piece of silver. That's a turtleneck that I have knit again. A um, Again, it's from the first issue of Len Magazine and I have already knit one. But I decided to go for the go-to raglan instead and I decided to use this um, drops yarn that is a bit... I mean, the color is not perfect, but I think when I knit it together, it will just mix. Because they do have an orange, but that's more like a corally color and I didn't want that for a full sweater. So I decided on the red and I think it will work out as soon as I start knitting with it. Um, so that's another thing that I have planned and I told you already last time I'm going to use the long line pattern to knit another cardigan that's going to be a bit fuzzy and um, I wanted to have a basic you know just a, a staple basic that will go with everything and I decided to use a light gray so I got the drops Farbe and the matching alpaca silk to go with it and this is going to be a long line cardigan by Hohi with a little less deep collar and I will add some pockets that's going to happen so these are all the plans I have because you know I just want to start everything <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on maybe I, I just don't know and of course the um What's the word? The So Day cardigan is still on absolutely on top of that list. And also, I got the new pattern by Thea Coleman. It's called The Botanist, and it's a cable pattern. It's all over cable cardigan. And when I looked at it, I thought, oh, I really want to make this. I said to myself, if you have yarn that matches, that you can use, you're allowed to buy the pattern. And I have exactly one yarn <laughs> that I can use for it. And um, I got the pattern. So that's also going to happen. But I didn't bring it, so I can't show you. But I want to start everything. Just everything is on my to-do list right now. So we'll see what, what makes its way on my needles first. Now, uh, yeah. I don't have spinning. 
I didn't want to spin. No, this goes away. <clears throat> Just no spinning. For new stuff, I have all the drops of pack of silk and the Fabe yarn that I just showed, and I got the new pom pom in the mag uh, magazine in the in the mail that I didn't bring, but I kind of want to make almost everything from it. Pom pom magazine is the only knitting magazine I am subscribing to currently, and if I could, I would subscribe to Len because these two, I want to make everything, and the new pom pom does not disappoint. I'm sorry, I have to blow my nose. This cold, it drives me crazy. Okay, so the new Pom Pom, it's gorgeous. Um, if you do not subscribe to Pom Pom Magazine, you should look it up on Ravelry because you can always get a, a digital download only. You don't have to have the physical thing. And it's very, very much worth it. So, reading, listening, watching. I am still reading Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. It's this book. It's the second book in the Six of Crows duology. I'm that far in the story. <clears throat> uh, I enjoy it, but it doesn't call to me, you know. I just feel like I've been stuck it, at this point forever, and I just... It will get finished sometime soon, I hope, but it doesn't really call to me. So, I'm not sure. For listening, I just, yesterday, the day before, I started re-listening to the uh, Rubinrod um, book by Kerstin Gier. Uh, it's the Edelstein Trilogy. It has been translated to English. It's called Ruby Red in English. And uh, it's a trilogy. It's a German trilogy, so it's written by a German author. And the German version is absolutely amazing. It's um, three books about this big, and I read all three in one week, and I loved them. And I listened to the English audiobook, because a lot of English people didn't like it, and I can understand why, because the English version is just not as good as the German one. So, um, yeah, I've started listening to it again, because I love it. And I haven't watched anything significant to talk about. No movies, no nothing. I just watched QI on YouTube because I love QI because it has Stephen Fry and I love Stephen Fry. So <laughs> yeah, that's all I did. Now, sewing, the big thing. I made clothes. So first of all, what I'm wearing is this natty top. I have to pull it down a bit. Um, this fabric is super fun. I have to, I'm going to take off the cardigan for a second here. So this is the natty top. It is a free pattern on the internet. And the uh, fabric that I used was a border print, so I'm going to have to somehow turn around. So this is the back of it, and this was actually on top here. So I cut the, the top completely against the grain, because it's a border print, how else will I use it? And um, I had exactly like this much fabric. I don't know what that is, 50 centimeters maybe. And I was just able to squeeze it out. So it's a bit slimmer than my other natty tops are. But I really like it. I think it turned out super sweet. It's a, it's a fun fabric. And yeah, I just, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. So the cardigan that I have on top, I'm going to show you one detail and then I'm going to put it on again. So no, let's go back to the natty top. <laughs> Let's be organized here. So this is the pattern. It's like I said, a free pattern. It's two pattern pieces, a front, a back. Put it together, twin needle around, you're done. I think if you're really fast, you can make this in half an hour. Now the cardigan. I use the pattern from this magazine. It's a German magazine, as you can see. It's called Diana Moden, and they do not tell you if it's spring or summer and which year. They just tell you a number of the magazine. So this is Diana Moden number 52. And I used um, pattern number 28. And it is this cardigan here. That's what I made. The most interesting thing about this is the collar that goes on to the back like this. It's 
um, the color is attached to the front and to the front facing. It's one pattern piece that you then put on your back like this. And it's interesting. It's a very interesting um, construction. It's It was super easy to make. And I just think it looks nice. It looks really nice. It's It has bus starts in the front and it has two starts in the back to give it a bit more shape. And I'm quite happy with how it turned out. Um, I'm just really happy. What I did for the cardigan, I also have cut the blouse because I just kind of like the whole combination. And it is cut and ready to go. The only problem is I needed lining fabric because the pattern calls for lining. And I just thought, ah, don't need lining. But this fabric is so thin. You can actually see the other layers of fabric on me. I received this as a gift from my friend and it's just super thin. So I bought white lining fabric to go with this and then you know this will go with this cardigan what do you think so this is going to be my version of this i think it's a good fit and yeah so i just have to piece uh, put it together it's two pattern pieces it's, it's super simple to make i do have white lining to go under this and I want to make that this week so it's you know I have to combi combination thing done and yeah so that's that <clears throat> the other thing I made is here it's a dress it is a, the it's called Doris it's from this magazine it's October design woman because they mostly do kids stuff so that's their women's magazine and it's issue number two 2018 and it is called the Doris dress. And I'm going to show you the, the version that's in the magazine. Now, this is the dress that I made. And I did use a very thin uh, and very drapey fabric. And I'm not sure if that was a very good idea. I do like it. I love how it turned out. I think it's amazing. But it doesn't, you know, hold up as much as it should. If you look at this line drawing here. Now come. Here. So if you look at this line drawing and then look at my dress, you can see that the bit where the pocket is doesn't stand out as much. Because this is actually where the pockets are. It is supposed to be this balloony thing. And you cut the pockets with the front and the back in one piece. So it just kind of ends up looking a bit weird when you do it. It's uh, In the end, it was super, super easy to assemble. I still have to weave in the ends because if you do overlocking and you don't secure your overlock th uh, threads with a second, you know, stitch line, you have to weave them in and I still have to do that as you can see. Um, I did kind of screw up here as you cannot see but I don't have any seam allowances in here so I have to with a bit of hand stitching secure just the top of the V here so it just doesn't fray and apart from that I really like it. What it is however it is very wide in the waist. I'm not sure if you can tell but um, I should have done it smaller here to have it more fitted at the top of my body and then go out. Um, I cannot change that because like I said, this piece down here has the pockets already included. So I cannot just go back and take in the side seams. Um, so I've decided to just leave it as it is. And you know, I like it. It's a very comfy dress the way it is now, so it's going to stay the way it is. But yeah, it was super, super easy. The um, the bodice is a pattern piece that they use for several things in the pattern, uh, in this magazine, and I traced everything to go with it. 
So you can have just a bodice a bit longer as a t-shirt or they have a different kind of skirt on, on the bottom to not have it this balloony thing but more like an A-line. So I'm probably going to try out the other variations as well because I really like it and I think it would be a good staple, you know, especially the t-shirt version because of the v-neck. So yeah, that is what I made. The fabric, like I said, it's a very drapey fabric. I think it might have a little bit of a wool content, but I'm not sure. But it's it's this marble effect. I like it. Now, that's the creative um, content. I have for everything else two things. The next VKN will take place this Saturday. I tried last week, you know, I wanted to have a VKN last week. It didn't happen because I just felt like shit. So, um, I'm gonna try again this week. That's Saturday, the 17th of November on at 9 p.m. GMT plus one. That's, you know, that's my time zone. <laughs> so I'm going to post a link in the Ravelry group if you want to join. Just click that link and you're in. It's super easy for everyone. And then for my real talk this time, I decided to talk about Christmas because Christmas around the corner. I know it doesn't look like it's around the corner because here in Germany, we had like 20 degrees the day before yesterday. It's probably why I have this cold and why it will not go away because we have 20 degrees and super sunny and the next day it's like, eh. and what it actually is supposed to be this time of the year. And then it's super warm again, and then it's cold and windy, and then it's super warm, and it's just like, ugh. It's horrible weather right now, just because it just cannot make up its mind. So, yeah, but Christmas is like five or six weeks away, and every year I start assembling or accumulating Christmas gifts so in probably around mid-September, when the school year starts. Because I do not want to be stressed in the last weeks before Christmas and having to get everything together. And um, this year, I have decided to not make any hand-knit gifts for anyone. Not even my husband, not my child, no one. I will make a few little sewn gifts because they are so much quicker. But uh, apart from that, no hand knits Because I am just, I don't want to stress myself, you know? I've had so much to do and so much to work on myself this year that I just don't want to stress myself out. And also, Christmas is a bit of a weird time around my house because 10 years ago now, my father-in-law passed away on Christmas Eve. And Christmas Eve is the day where we do gifts, you know, it's the main day in Germany for celebrating and for, you know, so for the last nine years, my mother and sisters-in-law came to our house because they didn't want to be home because, you know, it's, it's just a very weird situation. And, um, I've always said, oh, yeah, sure. Fine. You can come here. I understand the reasoning behind it. It's, it's okay. And this year, my mother-in-law just decided, yeah, well, no, we will not come to your house because, um, she doesn't know what we will tell Tim regarding to Christmas and why it's celebrated because we don't believe in anything and she cannot make it up with her uh, faith. But the last nine years, it wasn't a problem. So I'm very, very angry because first of all, she has absolutely no idea what I believe in or don't believe in. So that's just... It made me very angry. That is not a good reasoning for me because now we have a child and that child has the belief in Christmas that it is this magical time. And yeah, of course, I will tell him why we celebrate Christmas. I will not just shove gifts up his ass because I don't want that. Also, I think it kind of hurts. So, uh, yeah, I'm just so angry. So this year we will celebrate Christmas ourselves. Just my husband, my son, and me, which is a nice thing. You know, I wanted to have that forever. But the reasoning behind it, I cannot, I'm just so angry. Because, like I said, 
she started the conversation with, I do not know what you believe in, so I cannot make it up with my faith and I will stay home because I don't want to be part of it. What? How about just asking me what I believe in and what I will teach my son? I mean, what what's the problem with that? So yeah, um, we will have a very quiet and just us Christmas. And I'm looking forward to it, actually. I think I, I really do look forward to it. But I still cannot get over the what she said exactly. That I cannot and will not tell you. Because it's just... Yeah. It made me so angry. In fact, it made me so very angry that I was, like, boiling for a few days. And then I came down with this cold. And if you believe in body and soul need to be in, you know, um, in harmony for you to feel good, then, um, that harmony got very disrupted and, and, you know, I ended up with a very awful cold that I cannot shake. So yeah, it's just not good. Not good. So yeah, Christmas, if you do gift knitting, more power to you. I do not do any gift knitting this year. I've done gift knitting forever. I made socks for everyone. <clears throat> I mean, I had my father's Christmas socks finished last year in the beginning of October, probably about a week before he died. So maybe that's also a reason why I decided not to do gift knitting because I'm just, you know, it's just, yeah. But yeah, like I said, I did a lot of gift knitting. I knit things for my friends and for my family and for everyone. But I, I will not this year. Not a single stitch for anyone except myself. And I did. I made the hat for Tim. And I'm going to start a cardigan for him as well. Because he just, he is so sweet. And everything I knit is like, is that for me, mommy? And when I go through my yarn to find um, combinations for sweaters or whatever. He likes to join me and he picks out yarn and says, Ooh, I like this. This could be for me. You could knit a scarf or whatever. So I'm going to knit stuff for him, but not for Christmas. I've just, I'm done with gift knitting. I'm not sure if I ever will do gift knitting again, but I will definitely not knit anything this year. I'm done. So yeah, that's it for this week. <laughs> I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful time. I hope to see you on Saturday for our VKN. It's always a lot of fun and the people that are there are super nice. So if you are on the fence and you're just like, nah, I'm not sure because you're like me and very introverted and you just are a bit afraid, don't be. I will be there and I'm usually nice. And the other girls are wonderful. So just come on over, join, and we will welcome you with open arms. And um, yeah, that is it for this week. I hope you all have a wonderful time. I hope to be able to talk to you again next week. I'm not sure because I'm going to be alone again. We will see how things work. But yeah, until I talk to you next time, enjoy everything you do. Bye. <laughs>